Welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast, where frontline sales leaders teach you how to build and scale an outbound sales team. Yeah, so the way I describe follow back, it's like, again, I'm not a, an F1 fan, but those who are, it's, it's like Formula One, right? So similar to what we just discussed, you completed an online meeting, you completed a face-to-face meeting, but then something happens. Now, we've all been there, budget gets cut, priorities get moved, and it becomes more of what we would call a longer deal cycle, three, six, 12, 18 months, and so on and so on. Now, the biggest problem is, is we are in pole position. We've, we've got that pole position and then the lights change red, right? They've, they've changed their mind or something happened. Now, of course, we need to isolate that objection and battle it accordingly. But if we can't, then we need to look at how we stay in pole position. Now, the biggest problem in sales today is people look at the low hanging fruit and they look at the easy deals, but they don't want to look at them long term deals. But actually, that's what gets you to the higher targets the higher paychecks and the higher commissions because you've constantly got a pipeline. Now, yeah. how we would describe it is right. Okay. You finished that meeting. You've isolated that objection. You've done the simple follow-up process that we just talked about. You've booked next steps. You've agreed on what needs to happen and you need to keep following back with them. Now don't just call them and go, hi, it's Kieran calling from growth stream. I'd love to talk about your sales process. No, you're not ready. Okay. Let me call you in three months. Right. That's not the way we're saying to do it. You need to look at why you're calling them and the value that you're offering them in that phone call. So for example, LinkedIn is great for this because you can comment, you can add value to them, you can send them eBooks, you can send them videos that they might find useful in the interim before you then next speak. But you need to make sure you're adding value throughout that whole process to keep your name at the forefront of their mind when that light basically goes back to green. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem that we see is people are closing deals on no longer interested. Now you start to then listen back to them calls and their meetings and realize they are interested. They're just not interested right now. Right. So you need to make sure that you're basically not handing deals to your competition because if they're going to come back in that buying frame and you've already done all the hard work, you're just losing simple deals through being yeah. lazy. So again, it's using your sales enablement tools, it's using your sales force, it's using your one-to-ones to really understand, are you following back with these deals? Now, my longest deal was two years and it was my biggest deal that I've ever done. The only reason I won it wasn't because my product was superior, it wasn't because I had this objection handed in masterclass, it was simply because I stayed at the forefront of their mind and continued to add value mm -hmm. throughout the journey, which meant they didn't go and look elsewhere. Yeah, so, in this case, what type of value, obviously, if you're working for a, an organization, they probably produce a lot of content that is going to be valuable for the type of people you're prospecting. So I imagine you're, you're employing some of that stuff um, as the value that you're adding. But what, what types of stuff are you sharing with that prospect to, to add value? Yeah, absolutely. For example, if you're selling a product that, you know, is a solution to a problem, right? You need to look at what is that problem that they're having. And let's say that your software gets a new update. You get a new feature that could help fix that problem. There's prime example. Or there might be an article that you saw online that you might find useful for them. It might not necessarily come from your company. That's okay. Hmm. But it's constantly having a reason to speak to them, but with a value add mm -hmm. rather than just hi, where are you at? Are you ready to buy? No. Okay. I'll speak in a month. Hi. Are you ready? It's, it's employing all of the tools around you, right? Okay. So you've got LinkedIn, you've got YouTube, you've got your marketing team strategy, you've got eBooks, you've got so many resources that you can continue to add value to them. And it might be that it's such a simple thing, but it still keeps you in the loop.